QQ farm gold finger plus exile plus farming and getting rich, Cheng Wei Yao traveled through time and dressed as a pitiful little one who was forced to remarry and was about to be exiled. Don't panic, the farm can handle it. I have the supplies. I casually raided the warehouse of the garbage mansion and rushed towards a new life with supplies. My husband is a pitiful little one who has been bullied. Don't be afraid, I will save you for my wife. Targeting the malicious sister. In. Law, slap it to death, finish it. Even the weak Empress Dowager awakened under my great teachings. Along the way, natural disasters and man. Made calamities, fighting for the best, protecting family members, are all effortless. Enough food tubes. Countless silver coins. Open a restaurant and get rich. How could a husband who has gone through countless hardships to support him be a false exile? Madam, you are my only wife in this lifetime. Don't come over. You big scammer. I just craved your body. Keywords of the novel. After being exiled, I carried the farm space to make a comeback without a pop dot up window. After being exiled, I carried the farm space to make a comeback. Download the complete text. After being exiled, I carried the farm space to make a comeback and read the latest chapters. Chapter 1 QQ Farm You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 1 QQ Farm Bitch What are you pretending to be dead for? Being able to marry me is your blessing. If you dare to commit suicide again, I will break your father's leg and make him unable to take the imperial examination again. The sinister voice was sharp and piercing, but Cheng Wei Yao couldn't open her eyes. Then, lying in bed, Cheng Wei Yao felt a hard slap on her face, causing a burning pain. She heard the sound of someone brushing their sleeves and leaving. Mmm. Cheng Wei Yao let out a muffled groan, feeling pain all over her body, especially in her head, as if a sharp cone was pounding fiercely. In a daze, the memory of this body flashed through her mind like a lantern. Outside the door, there were lights and decorations, blowing and beating. Inside, Cheng Wei Yao, the newlywed bride, was as pale as ashes, while her biological parents were still crying outside the hall, begging not to let her marry. After a while, Cheng Wei Yao finally received the memories in her mind, but she felt a chill all over her body, with resentment and unwillingness charging straight into her heart. Because the person who is going to get married today should have been the legitimate daughter of a wealthy family, Cheng Weining. However, on the day before his wedding, King Qinghe Wen Cheng Yun was ordered to enter the palace and had a dispute with the emperor. Long Yen was furious and in a fit of anger, he wanted to immediately exile Wen Cheng Yun to northern Xinjiang. Or perhaps the Empress Dowager should kneel in front of the palace and plead for mercy, willing to be demoted to a commoner, and then seek marriage with Wen Qing Yun before being exiled the once hot marriage instantly turned into a hot potato. The government was both unwilling to compensate Qing Weining and unwilling to bear the stigma of abandoning marriage, and was extremely anxious. Unexpectedly, at this moment, Cheng Weining stood up and suggested that Cheng Wei Yao, the second wife, marry on her behalf. It not only protects oneself but also conceals the truth. Both sides are girls from the government, marrying someone is not getting married. Upon learning of this, the original owner's eyes immediately turned black, but there was no place to seek justice, and he even took poison in his newlywed room. Although it was discovered in time to induce vomiting, when I woke up again, I changed the core. Cheng Wei Yao slowly sat up, feeling sad and angry in this scene. But she is not the original owner. Cheng Wei Yao tidied up her mood and planned to take advantage of the situation, cracking down on her moves. When she wanted to look outside through the window, she stumbled. D. Congratulations to the host for successfully opening QQ Farm. Strange sounds echoed in Cheng Wei Yao's mind. The long table she had touched was gone, and a huge space appeared in Cheng Wei Yao's sea of consciousness, with farmland and a small house, and the long table was prominently inside. Is this the legendary crossing Golden Finger? With a try and see attitude, 
Chen Wei Yao silently recited in her heart. The Eight Immortals Table The table did indeed reappear in the room. Chen Wei Yao couldn't help but repeatedly probe with the items in the room. Sure enough, whether it's tables, chairs, benches, or vases and teacups, as long as she has a thought, she will receive it in her own space. After exploring for a while, Chen Wei Yao realized that there seemed to be a distance limit to this golden finger, as she stood in front of the dressing table at the foot of the east wall, unable to retract the stepping bed against the west wall. However, if it were any closer, Chen Wei Yao tentatively took a step forward and saw the bed suddenly disappear from sight with a swoosh. Now it's stable, let's not just exile, but let her cultivate the land. Although she really wanted to continue learning about the use of the golden finger, there was something more urgent at the moment. Cheng Wei Yao suppressed her excitement and quickly went out. Before she could step into the lobby, Cheng Guogong could hear him sternly reprimand. Wei Ning has been practicing virtue and etiquette since childhood, and her appearance and posture are evident to everyone. Even if she were to become an empress in the palace, she would still be more than enough. She has suffered so much, like a flower like jade. How could she be exiled to that wilderness with King Qingha? The original aunt said that waning is a treasure on the left, and she felt bitter on the right. As soon as Qing Weiyao approached, she couldn't help but praise her ability to reverse right and wrong. Are you going to sacrifice my Weiyao? Seeing everyone else remain silent, the original father Cheng Yingqi's heart twisted like a knife, tears streaming down his face, while the original mother was already sobbing uncontrollably. Upon hearing this, Cheng Wei Yao couldn't help but kick over the nearby flower pot with a loud bang, immediately attracting everyone's attention. Cheng Wei Yao laughed in anger and clapped her hands as she walked down the steps towards the crowd. The woman was dressed in red, with disheveled hair and a plump mouth. She had a bright red palm print on her face, but her eyes were firm, her voice was loud and clear, and she walked briskly. Bending down alone, yet majestic like a rainbow. Since the hot potato was thrown to me today, I naturally want to say a few words. The second house is in a weak position, and the matter of remarriage has become a foregone conclusion. All Ching Wei Yao can do is to strive for more benefits. She decisively lifted her robe and immediately knelt down in the hall. Since my grandparents chose Wei Yao to marry, for the sake of the entire government, Wei Yao dare not have any complaints. However, in the future, he will travel with King Qinghe to a foreign land, and it will be difficult to see his parents again. His parents are no less heartbroken than losing Wei Yao, and under their eagerness, there may be some conflicts with them. I hope my grandparents can understand. Cheng Wei Yao knelt coldly on the ground, her phoenix eyes sweeping across the hall, showing deep affection and affection. As she watched her original grandparents frown, she quickly comforted her father and mother Cheng who were stunned. Taking advantage of the hot iron, he bowed sharply and said, You all know the truth behind Wei Yao's marriage. The uncle and his family advocated for such a big matter without authorization, not to mention not discussing with their grandfather, not taking his grandfather seriously, and not to mention what a crime of bullying the king it is. The uncle and aunt did not say thank their parents and Wei Yao, but when their parents lost their love, they fell into a trap, took advantage of it, and even acted obediently. If others find out, they may think that the duke's mansion is such a heartless and unjust generation, causing the duke's mansion to lose face and leading people to think that their grandfather's teachings on their children are shameless and shameless. She wants to protect her original parents, but she won't easily let go of those who bully them. Sure enough, Duke Chang's face immediately turned extremely pale, and even Cheng Li was so frightened that he knelt down immediately. He didn't expect the weak dead girl to have such sharp teeth and sharp mouth today, calling her unjust and pointing out that Cheng Wei Yao had volunteered. Oh, it's pure farting. Voluntary. Voluntarily hold down your hands and feet and forcefully wrap them in wedding clothes. Voluntarily being gagged and tied up, forcefully pressing my hair to do makeup. Who would willingly wear wedding clothes and die in their own boudoir during the most beautiful years? 
Cheng Wei Yao stared fixedly at Duke Cheng, and even if you didn't make me feel better, I would drag you to hell with all my might. Are you threatening me? Qin Guogong was given such a direct gaze by a woman for the first time, not to mention that she was still his granddaughter, and immediately slammed the table heavily. Wei Yao dared not, and hoped that her grandfather would uphold justice and fulfill her granddaughter's small wish, so that those who did wrong would receive the punishment they deserve, and those who owed should receive the compensation they deserve. This way, her granddaughter could also marry with peace of mind, and the mansion could be peaceful. End of this chapter Chapter 2 The Good Show is Still to Come You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 2 The Good Show is Still to Come There was a complete silence in the hall, and everyone finally came to their senses. After reminiscing about Ching Weiyao's words, no one dared to be that outstanding bird. Seeing the original owners and hesitating to speak, but being held tightly by Ching Li, with a face full of hatred as she gritted her silver teeth, Ching Wei Yao chuckled inwardly. Retribution is not satisfying, the good news is still ahead. Sure enough, even if he was unwilling, Duke Cheng had already spoken up. The power of the big house was not exercised properly, and the power of the head of the family was reduced. The third house was promoted and the second house became independent. After speaking, Duke Cheng looked at his second son whom he had never valued before and sighed. Even if you don't say it, I would still beg your majesty to grant him shade and let him serve as an official. It must be a rich land. Thank you very much, grandfather. Cheng Wei Yao sneered at the fatherly expression of Duke Cheng. As the auspicious time approached, Wei Yao begged to bring my mother's dowry and get married with peace of mind. Cheng Guogong gritted his teeth, as Cheng Wei Yao had said, the auspicious time was approaching, and it was not appropriate to cause trouble at this time, so he reluctantly agreed. At one moment, several families are happy and several families are sad, but no one dares to say otherwise. Ignoring the gaze of Cheng Li and his wife who wanted to devour her alive, Cheng Wei Yao stood up and helped her original parents back into the room. Stare, you'll cry in the future. San Fang is not easy to deal with. He has always been overshadowed by the big house, and once he gains power, the two families cannot compete to the death. It seems that after she leaves, this mansion will be even more exciting. Accompanying Li to the warehouse to collect her dowry, Cheng Wei Yao's eyes were filled with various fabrics, jewelry, and some precious medicinal herbs. She remembered in her memory that although her family came from a wealthy background, they lived a better life than the lower class. Cheng's father was even more ill and difficult to treat, and her heart was filled with injustice for the original owner. Miss, stop looking. Your mother's dowry is just like this. The nanny in charge of the warehouse over there urged and looked contemptuous, causing Cheng Wei Yao to raise her eyebrows and eyes, which also strengthened her determination in her heart. She threw the order to the nanny and said, then please be careful, nanny. Don't blame me for anything that's missing. Mammy glanced at the dowry that was not even a fraction of Ching Guogong's mansion, snorted contemptuously, and waved her hand. Looking coldly at a few maids and women locking the door, Cheng Wei Yao stood at the door with a thought in her mind. In a deserted place, the warehouse boxes were full of items, all of which disappeared. I couldn't help but curl my lips when I remembered the angry and despondent appearance of the government after I got married. She emptied all the warehouses in the government office, not only to vent her anger, but also to provide extra security for her future career. The entire Qingha Prince's mansion was immersed in a state of sorrow, without even holding the ceremony of worshipping heaven and earth. Cheng Wei Yao didn't show any affectation either. She quickly took off her heavy wedding attire and changed into lightweight clothes. She packed a small package and followed Wen Qingyun to her side. And the king of Qingha had already shed his joyful attire, dressed in a light crimson robe and standing on the side with a haggard face, standing straight without breaking his character. I've wronged madam, the man said with a guilty expression in his eyes. He comforted her with a smile and fixed his gaze on her. 
If she had not known her fate of exile, Cheng Wei Yao would have had the illusion that this person would get married and marry the person she loves the most. She couldn't help but look up at this future husband. Cheng Wei Yao showed a self-proclaimed friendly smile. There was a female family member in the crowd who wanted to argue, but was stopped by a glance from Wen Cheng Yun. Cheng Wei Yao looked at it and silently sighed, then suddenly fell into the clouds. It was normal for her to be unable to bear it. It's the king of Qinghe, Wen Cheng Yun, who seems to have a good acceptance ability. The exiled team, with a long and disheartened expression, walked step by step towards the outside of the city under the escort of the soldiers, accompanied by the scorching sun. Cheng Guogong's mansion, Cheng Guogong and Cheng Guogong's wife looked at the empty warehouse, leaving not even a penny or two. Cheng Guogong trembled and reached out his hand, pointing to the empty warehouse and roaring angrily, Check it out, let me check it out. Even if you dig three feet deep, you need to find out. And the initiator has already left the capital and is sitting under a big tree in the suburbs to rest. But at this moment, Cheng Wei Yao couldn't be happy. She was worried about the sudden inability to open the space. Even though she had just been exiled, she could still take out a gold ingot on this journey, besides Wen Cheng Yun, who looked dull but slightly gentle, there was also his mother, Lady Gui, and her entire family. Faced with such a large family, she had to sigh. She is not afraid of exile, only afraid of being accompanied by soldiers who are secretly causing trouble. Before she reaches northern Xinjiang, she will starve to death on the road. Bring it to you. You thought you were a luxurious nobleman, but now you're just a prisoner. A mocking voice came from behind, and Cheng Wei Yao frowned and looked over. I saw the trigger in Wen Qingyun's hand fall into the hands of a soldier, and the onlookers even encouraged them to search. Wen Qingyun's eyes were frozen. Although he cooperated with the emperor to perform a play and secretly investigated the people behind him in the name of exile, it did not mean that he could be bullied casually. I advise you to be cautious in your words and actions. I have been stained with a lot of blood and have been exiled on both sides. I don't mind having a few more of you. The three soldiers looked at each other and said, it's not that the brothers are going to make things difficult for the prince. It's just that if it's not like this, it won't be easy to explain to the other side of the capital. What are you talking nonsense about with him? The leader said and greeted Wen Cheng Yun. He is different. Previously, his younger brother obeyed the orders of King Qinghe and died tragically on the battlefield, but in the end, he was sent away by his younger brother for not obeying orders. Hatred has been held for a long time, suffering from the lack of opportunity, and now the opportunity has come. Wen Qingyun's eyes flashed brightly, and indeed, those people couldn't help but take action. The situation was tense, and Cheng Wei Yao saw Wen Qingyun's eyes instantly turn cold. He only managed to deal with the other two with a few moves, forcing the leader to fly out with just one palm. Then he pounced and pressed the official's throat with one knee. Help! The remaining voices were all choked up in my throat and turned into sobs. As a modern person, Cheng Wei Yao enjoyed watching it for a while and couldn't help but touch her chin. Her eyes exclaimed in admiration, as this cheap husband has excellent martial arts skills. It doesn't matter if you have high martial arts skills alone, Ching Huang. Think about your mother. Seeing the invincibility, a small soldier sneaked away to clamp the neck of the Empress Dowager. The Empress Dowager could only hold the child and cry, Cheng Yun, stop. Cheng Wei Yao let out a sigh and could only watch helplessly as when Cheng Yun was subdued, while the leading soldier wiped the blood from the corner of his mouth, flipped up from the ground, and turned around to punch Wen Qing Yun in the face. It's simply deceiving people too much. You're reckless. Cheng Wei Yao shouted loudly. At that moment, the leading soldier paused for a moment, causing Wen Qing Yun to turn his head and avoid the punch. End of this chapter. Chapter 3 Gu Yuan You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 3 Gu Yuan, Why? The young lady starts to feel sorry for her husband as soon as she passes the door and hasn't even gotten married yet. 
The noble families in the capital are intricately intertwined, and your children are so deceiving. Aren't you afraid that you won't know how you will die in the future? The other few people showed a hesitant expression and couldn't help but hold on to the leader. A few people glared angrily at Ching Weiyao, but she felt that the leader was not right. If she didn't handle it, it would be difficult to end the situation. This was just a moment of tranquility. Weighing the only gold ingot, Cheng Weiyao walked over with some pain and quietly handed it to the leader. Come on, it's not easy for you to escort, but it's not right to seek personal revenge. You're still young, there's no need to argue with the money, right? Hello, we can do the same. Feeling his wavering, Cheng Weiyao lightly patted his shoulder, balancing strength and softness. My husband was once out of power, but he is also a sibling of the current emperor. If you insist on not being afraid of death, you can try moving him again. The leader gritted his teeth and said with an unwilling expression. Since there is still so much money left after stealing the house, you can prepare your own food. Cheng Weiyao felt that her gaze was all focused on her at this moment, and it was estimated that many people would hate her to death. When Ching Yun looked at her with complex eyes, his voice hoarse after not drinking water for a few days. Actually, you don't have to do this for me, he said Ching Weiyao thought about how this man has been shouldering everything on his own these days, and felt a moment of weakness. She reached out to trim the scattered hair on his forehead and said, Ah, my husband is not the same. We have to take care of this big family behind us in everything. It's difficult for you. Wen Qingyun was stunned for a moment. Today's action made him change his mind about his wife, who had been lonely and dull all the way. Thinking of her brave and fearless appearance, he couldn't help but clench his fist against his lips and cough lightly, patting her shoulder. There's still some food in the package, I'll have my little sister pick it up for you later. It's strange if it can reach my mouth as soon as Ching Weiyao thought of her observations these past few days, she couldn't help but feel a bit sympathetic towards the man in front of her. I don't know what exactly happened. The emperor not only exiled him, but also exiled everyone related to his mother. Moreover, his mother's family members are really Ching Weiyao, as an outsider, felt immoral. Although it was understandable to complain about Wen Ching Yun, she secretly hid a lot of food while they were feeling dizzy and hungry. She saw her several times and even looked proud. After thinking about it, Cheng Weiyao still felt that she couldn't open it from herself, but it was more practical to take out food from the space where there was something to eat than from that big family. I didn't expect to try like this, but unexpectedly took out a handful of longans from inside. Can you take it out again? The products from Ling Tian contain a trace of spiritual energy, which can strengthen the body and strengthen health when consumed. There is an extra piece of land and longan in the space. Gu Yuan. She suddenly remembered eating longans on the wedding sedan and casually throwing them into the space. Unexpectedly, new longans had grown now. But in an instant, she was overjoyed because the food problem had been solved. Ha ha. At the time of exile, she also tried the function of space, but now it seems like she hasn't seen it for a few days, and the functions have increased. But it shouldn't be either. The biggest change these days, um, just now, when Ching Yun took a photo of her. Ching Weiyao thought wildly. Sister-in-law, eat pancakes. A sticky voice came from behind Ching Weiyao, and her thoughts withdrew from the space. She turned to see a three-year-old baby. Unexpectedly, it was Wen Qingming, the younger brother of Wen Qingyun, who gave the gift. His gaze was pure and different from the cold and thin family behind him. Only the joy of sharing made people feel good. She raised a kind smile and took the cake and touched his head, saying, Have you eaten it? Wen Qingming stared at the cake, swallowed his saliva, shook his head thirsty, and said, Brother said he wants to give it to sister. In. Law sister.in.law will eat it. Humph, if it weren't for her, how could it have caused everyone to have no food to eat? Fortunately, she still wants to eat our food. A piercing female voice came from afar. Ching Weiyao looked up and saw that it was Wen Qingyun's sister, Princess Mingqing Wen Liyu. 
She was still wearing a goose yellow pleated skirt, but the hem was already dirty. On the journey of exile, she would occasionally cry and fuss coquettishly, even pampering herself as a precious little princess. Cheng Wei Yao had already taken it for granted, but she had lost her initial heartache and remained indifferent. Hey, have you ever listened to what the palace is saying? When Li Yu refused to let go and angrily ignored Cheng Wei Yao. Cheng Wei Yao curled her lips and said, according to reason, you should call me sister. In law, and you're not a princess anymore. You should call me instead of my palace. Also, if you feel like you should be like you, not daring to take a breath when your brother is beaten up in exchange for so much food, then I have nothing to say. You. You're not worthy to be my sister. In law. When Li Yu widened her eyes and stomped her feet in anger. You, you. I advise you to recognize reality now and then shut up, Cheng Wei Yao said as she dug out her ear, adding fuel to the fire. Seeing Wen Liu blushing with anger and her neck thick, Wen Cheng Yun spoke up. Ayu, I must apologize to Wei Yao for being unreasonable to my sister. In law. His words were faint, as if he was handling official matters, as if afraid that Wen Liu would be too wronged, so he spoke again. Ayu Nian is inexperienced. Please be more understanding, madam, in the future. Wen Li Yu was so angry that she was about to cry and refused to apologize. Anyway, after all, she's just a rough girl who only knows how to bully the weak and fear the hard, and she doesn't care. It's better to ponder more about one's own space with that leisure time. Before she could even think it over, Cheng Wei Yao saw Wen Qingming still standing on the side, looking at her gluttony. She could not help feeling soft. She pretended to put her hand into the bundle and took out a few pieces of peach cakes and some almond cakes. They were all her stock. They were dim sum in the room when she got married. Come on, you can give your sister in law some cakes and her sister in law can give you some dim sum. Wen Qingming widened his eyes and kept swallowing saliva, but turned his head to look at Wen Qingyun. Wen Qingyun also looked over here in confusion. Can this small cloth bag hold these foods? But there are also sisters and mothers. Before he could think it over, he heard Qing Weiyao speak, it was given by sister. In. Law. You don't have to look at others. If you want, you can share some with your mother and sister. Wen Qingyun couldn't help but burst into laughter upon hearing this. Miss Cheng, on the other hand, has a child's temperament. Previously, she could clearly feel that she didn't like her younger sister, but this would make Ching Ming act spoiled and willing to do so. It's not her holy mother, it's just that although she doesn't have much food in her space, she still has enough to support her and the five people of King Qingha. Ching Wei Yao had no choice but to cross her waist, after all, she couldn't be a complete person anymore. But in order to be foolproof, she planned to try the method of opening the space again, and sure enough, it didn't take long to open. Wen Qingyun looked at Cheng Wei Yao for a while and then eagerly looked at himself, feeling strange for a moment. What's going on? End of this chapter. Chapter 4 After Breakage You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 4 After Breakage Husband would you like to drink some water? As when Qingyun's heart warmed, at the same time, Qing Weiyao's divine consciousness could enter space again. So when Qingyun frowned and watched, and the girl handed over the water with a somewhat dazed expression. Fortunately, unfortunately, the space has opened up, but it is only related to when Qingyun's attitude. However, as long as the space can be opened up, when passing by the town, you can spend money to buy some utensils and food to put into the space, and then you can start improving your diet. Thinking about her past life as a Michelin chef, now she can only be reduced to digging wild vegetables. It's hard to think about it, Sai. Fate is deceiving people. Over there, the aroma of peach cake oil drifted to the wife's home. When half of the children saw Wen Qingming eating dim sum, their eyes turned and ran up. Hand over the dim sum. They are all seven or eight year old boys. They are supposed to be the bullies at home. Seeing that the little bun refused, 
they would fight around Wen Qingming. Upon seeing this, Empress Dowager Gui quickly pulled her youngest son into her arms and instead handed over her portion. Aunt has dim sum here. Take them to eat. Don't frighten your brother. Cheng Wei Yao stood on the side, her eyes twitching as she watched. Her family was doing much better than them, not only spending money to get through the soldiers in custody, but also being allowed to be exiled with 30% of their assets. But Imperial Concubine, please be more sober. The treasury of King Qingha has been emptied and nothing is allowed to be taken away, so even eating has become a problem now. Put it down for me. Cheng Wei Yao simply became the villain, took Wen Qingming into her arms, and glared at the bare children. I want to feed my mother and my little brothers and sisters. Nobody else can move me. After speaking, drive away a few children. Although Empress Dowager Gui didn't say anything, she clearly disagreed with Cheng Wei Yao's approach. They are still children. Empress Dowager Gui did not expect Cheng Wei Yao to be so dominant, and she spoke up awkwardly to defend herself. They have their own parents and family, and their lives are much better than ours. They don't need their mother to be pitiful. Cheng Wei Yao leisurely took on the role of the priestess, and she could see that this noble consort was just a holy mother with no bad intentions, but too weak. Now she's going to be exiled. In her words, it's going to cultivate the land. The poor mountains and rivers are creating trouble for the people, not to mention there's still a nest at her doorstep. This is not good. Cheng Wei Yao placed Wen Qingming on the ground and turned to look at Empress Dowager Gui. Mother thinks I did something wrong. Your concubine pursed her lips and sighed for a long time. They are still half-grown children. Just eat some dim sum. There is no need to be so fierce. You're right, but you know what's going on in our family. My younger brother is still so young and the future is uncertain. How long can we sustain our food? Looking at Ching Wei Yao in confusion, she had never cared about these things and naturally didn't know how to answer. If we run out of food and my mother goes to your mother's house, can we borrow some food to eat? During these two schedules, Wei Yao looked coldly at the family members of Empress Dowager Gui, selfish and indifferent. Her disgust and disdain towards her daughter were completely undisguised. The Empress Dowager clearly understood all of this and stood awkwardly in front of Cheng Wei Yao, speechless for a moment. This scene was clearly seen by Wen Cheng Yun sitting on the side, and he couldn't help but glance up at Cheng Wei Yao. On the way of exile, she slept outdoors and had meals, but fortunately, when passing by the town, she bought a lot of things and secretly put them into the space. The sky suddenly changed, and the strong wind lifted up gravel, causing Cheng Wei Yao to pout and then look up to feel the warmth and coolness of the rain. The crowd searched for a vast cave nearby, and for a while, some people complained loudly, while others ran to the entrance and opened their mouths to collect rainwater. Cheng Wei Yao, however, was worried about what she had just seen. This large cave was not made of stone, and now that there is a long drought and sweet dew, there is a high possibility of mudslides. If it collapses, it will be over. Sitting idly by is not her personality. Cheng Wei Yao silently moved to the man's side, intending to discuss with him. Husband, I have something urgent to discuss with you. As she spoke, Cheng Wei Yao felt her body suddenly tugged and rushed straight into Wen Qing Yin's arms. Business, discuss things. Cheng Wei Yao swallowed her saliva and looked up to see the man's pure white throat in front of her. She slid up and down a few times, and then heard a deep and magnetic voice echoing in her ears. It doesn't matter, if it's an urgent matter, with many people and diverse eyes, just say that. I don't know which heartstrings touched Ching Wei Yao immediately, she just felt her face turn red, from her neck to her ears. When Ching Yun lowered his eyes and was also stunned. He approached the girl's face, which was white and flushed, with starry eyes like waves. She was half open with a cherry-shaped mouth, shy and cute. After a while, he explained, just now there was a stone falling. I saw it was about to hit your head, so I gave you a hand, 
without any intention of being frivolous. Well, this Ching He King is quite upright and doesn't even flirt. Ching Wei Yao obediently turned her head and indeed saw the small stone lying quietly in his palm, which she grabbed after holding on to her. Her heart sank uncontrollably as she explained to him what she wanted to say. Finally, she earnestly said again. Husband, please trust me. Look at this cave, there are still sand and stones falling down now. It can be imagined that if it is true, we. Don't worry, wait for me here and take care of my mother and siblings. I'll come when I go. Following Wen Qingyin's gaze, Cheng Wei Yao instinctively shook her head. The previous few people had humiliated him, but now they are asking for help. If he goes, he will definitely be punished again. So she grabbed Wen Qingyin's sleeve, feeling very sore but determined, and took out a pair of earrings from the space, hiding them in her hand and heart, and stuffed them in. The warm fingertips parted at a touch, and before he could feel any other sensation, his heart sank under the pressure of the earrings in his hand. Wen Qingyun stood still, leaning sideways and looking at Qing Weiyao. Qing Weiyao pretended to be indifferent and waved her hand, harmful, my husband must be careful. It's not important for me here. I believe that with my husband's ability, these external things will eventually come back, right? Wen Qingyun nodded gently and said, wait for me here. I don't know what Wen Qingyun said, but he really convinced the official leader. When he returned to his side, he heard the leader shout loudly. Quiet. The piercing whistle echoed through the cave and fell silent for a moment. Seeing this, he nodded in satisfaction. It's raining outside and there are many floods in the mountains. This cave is very likely to collapse. Now, please follow the orders and evacuate the cave in an orderly manner for me. After speaking, Chen Weiyao saw the person's gaze pause on her side, and the following words immediately confirmed her ominous premonition. The Qingha King's family is cut off. End of this chapter Chapter 5 Thank you for having a conscience. You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 5 Thank you for having a conscience. The rain was heavy and urgent, causing pain on the body. Fortunately, it stopped raining not long before, and as expected by Cheng Weiyao, the cave collapsed. The youngest Wen Qingming was held in front by Wen Liu. After several days of rushing, the imperial concubine was already in poor health, so Cheng Weiyao supported her. As for Wen Qingyun, who was supposed to be at the back, the official committed another crime and forcibly pulled him to the front of several people. The shaky rocks rolling behind, coupled with the sound of the rushing rain and the friction of mud and sand, turned the once sheltered cave into a fierce beast with its mouth wide open, ready to devour people. No, no, I can't walk anymore. Just a few steps away, the Empress Dowager panted heavily and wanted to push Cheng Wei Yao away. Cheng Wei Yao still held up her sleeves to shield her from the rain. Upon hearing these words, she gritted her teeth in anger and said, Mother, please hold on a little longer. We need to hurry up. The imperial consort shook her head repeatedly. Suddenly, she felt her body being pulled, but in just a moment, she was forcefully pushed back towards the high ground ahead. Wei Yao. Illusion, how could Wen Qingyun call her? Cheng Wei Yao only felt a darkness in front of her, and the ground under her feet became loose and sunken. At a critical moment, she could only push away the Empress Dowager in front of her and instinctively grab onto the vines in front of her. Her eyes were almost unable to open when the rain washed away, and only her own breath was left in her ears. She felt that in the moment when she was about to be washed away, someone had grabbed her tightly and brought her out. Wake up, are you okay? In her hazy gaze, there was Wen Qingyun. When she thought she should ascend to heaven, he held her face and patted it with a worried expression. Yes, I'm going to be scared unconscious, Cheng Wei Yao said truthfully, taking a hard breath and pushing him away. His whole body trembled as he stood up trembling. I'm fine, I can continue. Let's follow up quickly. The next second, it felt like everything was spinning around 
but it turned into lying on her broad shoulders. Without saying a word, Wen Qingyun lifted her back. For a moment, she didn't ask much about the bloodstains on his hands, nor did he ask much about the cut on her knee. The two quickly followed the large team. During the rest, Wen Qingyun's gaze couldn't help but fall on the girl who was sleeping with her eyes closed against the stone. The girl's eyebrows and eyes stretched out with a joyful expression, and the reappeared micro yang seemed to favor her a bit, lightly falling on her forehead, emitting a stunning halo. Miss Cheng, the eldest daughter of the Qing family, is a secluded housewife with ten fingers that do not touch the sunshine and spring water. She has not seen her in the past few days, and she has let out a cry of bitterness and a sigh of fatigue, which can be understood as having a firm character. However, she can take care of and teach her mother such a sophisticated way of life, which makes her appear somewhat smooth. The most abrupt thing is that her lively and strong personality is not at all like the rumored gentleness and gentleness, and she can even predict a collapse. Wen Qingyun frowned and fell into deep thought. On this side, Cheng Weiyao clenched her fists in excitement because she realized that her space seemed to have escalated again. The integral gradually rose, although it stabilized at a certain value in the end, it can be confirmed that the space is almost equal to that of Wen Qingyun. At the same time, it also indicates that there is a limit to the conversion of points in contact with Wen Qingyun. If you want to obtain more points, you must cling tightly to Wen Qingyun's thigh. It's really a long and arduous task, and Cheng Weiyao felt depressed. But in an instant, another discovery instantly calmed her depression. Her sweet potato and mushroom, which were heavy in space, actually harvested in about ten minutes. At the moment when she was lost in thought, she didn't expect Wen Qingyun to stand in front of her. Her gaze met, and she blinked in a daze before suddenly waking up in fright. Cheng Weiyao was afraid for a while before realizing that Wen Qingyun was just blocking the sunset from shining on her face, and her reaction was too extreme. So Cheng Weiyao, feeling embarrassed, touched her nose and said, I'll find some food to eat. Perhaps due to the times, these officials don't actually hold women's families very strict. They probably think that a woman like Generation would not be able to survive after running away, so they don't care anymore. So Ching Weiyao happily went to find food in her heart. Standing by the deserted cliff, Ching Weiyao was preparing to take out sweet potatoes. You slut! Before she could turn her head, she noticed someone rushing towards her from behind. She dodged to the side and realized that the person had jumped off the cliff themselves. Wait! Isn't that Wen Liu? Ching Weiyao almost instinctively rushed over and grabbed her ankle, putting in a lot of effort to pull her up. You're bold, you, you poisonous woman, actually want to push me off the cliff. Wen Liu tearfully pointed at Ching Weiyao with a panicked expression as she was about to pounce and hit her. Ching Weiyao was immediately confused. Did they take the script backwards? Almost simultaneously, Wen Qingyun's cold voice came from behind, Ayu, come here. I don't know how much Wen Qingyun saw and heard, but judging from the current situation, he probably only heard the words behind Wen Liu. No, husband, I didn't push her. On one side was her younger sister, while on the other was her openly married wife. They were in a difficult situation, and Cheng Weiyao couldn't help but feel her heart hanging as she looked at Wen Qingyun's wrinkles. If it's getting dark and everyone is fine, let's hurry back. Damn it! Cheng Weiyao looked up at the sky speechlessly. After waiting for a while, she calmed down and glanced at Wen Liu, who was unwilling. She shook her head and said, You guys go first. I want to find something to eat. After the two of them left, Cheng Weiyao stood for a while before coming down the mountain. If you say you're leaving, you're really leaving. Cheng Weiyao angrily threw the stone in her hand, as if it could hit Wen Qingyun like this. Cheng Weiyao calmed down a bit. The stones fell into the bushes, but they began to shake, startling Cheng Weiyao. Who? After the rustling sound, there was a wild boar breathing with a rustling sound. A wild boar with a green face and fangs emerged from the withered trees, 
and Ching Wei Yao immediately jumped onto the stone and stood there. But this action seemed to have just angered it, and it charged towards her with its sharp teeth raised. Damn it! At the critical moment, even some swords in the space cannot be taken out. As death approached, Cheng Wei Yao's rare eyes turned red. When the wild boar was about to jump over, she jumped off the stone and rolled to the side, but fell so hard that she couldn't get up. Dong dong dong. God is really going to kill me. But after waiting for a long time, only a pitiful cry from the wild boar was heard. In the turning gaze, there was Wen Qingyun fighting with the wild boar, which the monk had a trace of strength to spare. Why, can't you even stand up? The man stained his hands with blood and frowned as he looked at her. The girl's eyes were red and there were tears in her eyes. Upon hearing this, she turned around and buried herself in her arms, shook her head, took a deep breath, and finally choked up, saying, Thank you for having a conscience. End of this chapter Chapter 6 Wild Boar You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 6 Wild Boar, Madam, Stay Away When Qingyun's furrowed long eyebrows loosened a bit, and it can be said that he can move at least to protect himself on the side without any problem. The wild boar, which had already fallen to the ground, stood up with a groan and stared at Wen Qingyun with fierce eyes and bright fangs. Wen Qingyun's attention was quickly drawn to the wild boar's savage charge. Previously, he was able to successfully strike while he was unprepared, but now he finds it difficult to succeed. Due to Wen Qingyun's timely evasion, the wild boar collided with the tree, and the big bowl of the tree was instantly shattered by the impact, which made Ching Wei Yao's heart tighten. It's really rough skin and thick flesh. Ching Wei Yao watched as one person and one pig swirled around, pursing her lips tightly. If there were no venue restrictions, the wild boar could have killed Wen Qingyun. Just now, Wen Qingyun's hand was stained with fresh blood, and the brightly colored blood indicated that the wild boar had a muscle injury. Wild boars have strong vitality and solid skin. To subdue them, it is necessary to grasp the key organs. Husband, continue. Cheng Wei Yao picked a sharp long stone from the ground and threw it in the direction of Wen Cheng Yun, while she quickly found a few broken stones and chose a big tree that the two of them hugged to quickly climb up. Wen Qingyun's eyes were quick and his hands were fast, but a hint of surprise flashed through his eyes. Wei Yao should be a young lady who grew up in the depths of her boudoir. Her behavior of climbing trees, can't you catch me, right? Stupid pig head, have the ability to come and bump. Cheng Wei Yao sat on the thick trunk of the tree, using the broken stones she had just picked up to repeatedly smash at the wild boar, her words full of provocation. Although the wild boar does not understand human language, it can sense Cheng Wei Yao's malice towards it from the weight of human speech, facial expressions, and limb movements, and immediately switch its attack target. The husband can attack the area between its neck, chin, or ears, or directly behind its shoulders, where is its heart or lungs. The big tree was repeatedly hit by wild boars, and the swaying of its body made Cheng Wei Yao instinctively hold on to the trunk opening her mouth and directing Wen Qingyun to start attacking. Wen Qingyun seized the opportunity for the wild boar's fangs to be stuck in the tree, and the sharp long stone hit the pig's neck with a brute force. With a loud cry, the wild boar stomped its hooves and shook its head and tail, trying to pull its fangs out of the tree. Husband, hurry up! Cheng Wei Yao was extremely anxious when she saw it from above. There was only one chance, and wild animals learn from it. If she missed it, it would be troublesome to try the same old trick again next time. That's good. When Qingyun's palms were all worn by stones, and his eyes sharpened. The strength of his subordinates became even stronger. After the final blow with all his might, the wild boar remained motionless, and when Qingyun breathed a sigh of relief. Feeling the stability of the tree, Cheng Wei Yao carefully slid down from the tree and looked at Wen Qingyun's hand with heartache. I'm fine, madam. Don't worry, most of it's wild boar blood. Wen Qingyun curled his lips and chuckled lightly, putting his hand behind him. 
Only he knew that his palm was still slightly numb at this moment Ching Weiyao is not a sentimental person either. Her gaze shifted to the wild boar. She and Wen Qingyun almost killed the wild boar with bare hands, right? The size of a wild boar is not small, just its fat can't be eaten and used to make sausages for a long time. Ching Weiyao's eyes lit up, and before she could move any further, she heard a crying female voice. Mother. You have to make your own decision for me. Just now, she wanted to push me off the cliff, and my brother has witnessed this with his own eyes. Brother. Wen Liu helped the Empress Dowager come over with a look of grievance on her face. She wanted to say a few more words, but when she saw the fallen wild boar, she was instantly dumbfounded. It seemed like meat, mother, I didn't, there was a misunderstanding just now. Cheng Weiyao's lips moved, and her husband was clearly a peaceful person, hoping he would speak up for her. The persistent Wen Liu is really more annoying than a wild boar, didn't you see that my brother and sister dot in dot law are both injured? You can also say a few words less, Eu. The Empress Dowager glanced at her son's expression and had already made a decision in her heart. Ching Yun was not someone who knew etiquette and did not speak to a Yu, indicating that what a Yu said was not true. She knows her own daughter's personality well, and she has a lot of temper. Seeing Cheng Wei Yao as a sister. In Dot Law who doesn't like her, it's inevitable for her to nitpick. Mother. When Li Yu fiercely gouged out Ching Wei Yao, unwilling to give up and gently shook the arm of the Empress Dowager, wanting to act coquettishly. Jiao didn't finish speaking, but this commotion actually provoked the official. What's the noise? It's too much freedom for your family, isn't it? A few officials impatiently pulled out their ears and looked at the wild boar, and their tone instantly changed from lazy to energetic. Yo! Wild boar, you guys have some good luck tonight, making a lot of money. Give them a hand and carry them back. This is going to be swallowed alone. Cheng Weiyao glanced at Wen Qingyun's expression in her spare time, indicating that her husband was planning to make a soft persimmon. Wen Qingyun really doesn't intend to intervene, and in their current situation, they can't even keep a wild boar. Ensuring the safety and basic needs of their family is already a fortunate thing in misfortune. Officer, this wild boar belongs to us and should be handled by us. At least he also risked his life to hunt and kill. With such an easy surrender, Cheng Weiyao couldn't swallow this breath. Wen Qingyun frowned slightly and reached out to grab Cheng Weiyao's sleeve, but in the end, it was a bit late. Cheng Weiyao just took a small step forward, and the leader directly pulled out the sword from his waist, staring at Cheng Weiyao's small face with a playful expression. Say it again, whose is this wild boar? The dazzling knife holder is in front of me, who dares to say no? Cheng Weiyao swallowed her saliva and smiled apologetically, I admit I was a bit loud just now. Of course, the wild boar belongs to our official officials. You don't mind being a villain, and you can dispose of it as you please. For a moment, the wind was calm and the waves were calm. Cheng Weiyao comforted herself like this. You're a sensible kid, guys. We'll have meat tonight. The leader snorted coldly, withdrew the sword from its sheath, and called on several brothers to lift the wild boar and walk towards the resting place. Cheng Weiyao and his group could only eagerly follow the official back, not daring to make a sound. Wild boars are a rare delicacy, and upon returning to their resting place, the officials began to clean and set fire to them. Everyone looked envious, but as a prisoner, they could only watch eagerly. The wild boar hung its head up and began to cut the skin from the neck. The knife that originally threatened Cheng Weiyao became a peeling knife, which first peeled off from the neck downwards and took out the internal organs after seeing the official peeling technique, many people who were originally feeling a little itchy took a break in their minds. On the contrary, Cheng Weiyao's mind became active. Officer, let's have a discussion. Cheng Weiyao rubbed her hands, smiled apologetically, and approached the leader. End of this chapter. Chapter 7 The taste is really strong. 
You are listening at NovelFull.audio. Chapter 7 The taste is really strong, how come it's you again? If it weren't for seeing that you're a lesbian, I would have spanked you a long time ago. Taking advantage of my good mood now, hurry up and say it. The leader's lips paused slightly, glanced at Cheng Weiyao's beautiful little face, and nodded mercifully. Of course, pork is for adults to enjoy. Other skeletons, such as pig offal, can adults be particularly generous in rewarding us. Before Ching Weiyao came here, she had thought over every word and summed up the essence in one word. Praise. Left and right are just verbal flattery, and the benefits in exchange are indeed practical. Pig in the water, that thing I used to feed dogs, but they didn't even eat it. Mrs. Ching Ha Wang looks white, tender, and tender, with a really strong taste. If you want me to see it, I'll give her a discount. A few officials exchanged glances, counted together, and nodded. Cheng Weiyao breathed a sigh of relief in her heart, and with a smile on her face, she carried the skeleton and the pig back to her position. Before she could sit down, the others who were fleeing together began to express disgust. As expected, she is a commoner who cannot stand the stage. Can this kind of thing also be imported? Fortunately, she licked her big face and begged for help, it's like embarrassing our Qingha prince's mansion. When Liu coquettishly pinched her nose with her hands and hid beside the empress dowager. Wei Yao, this thing is really not suitable for entry, why don't we just give it up? The empress dowager's face also turned slightly pale, making it difficult to imagine what the entrance of these things looked like. The newly killed wild boar, in addition to its bloody appearance, inevitably carries a fresh and strong fishy smell. For Cheng Weiyao, this represents freshness. For when Liu and Empress Dowager, who used to be princesses and concubines, the killing power of sight and smell is undoubtedly enormous, after all, they have always eaten ready.made delicacies. Why don't I stay away? Cheng Weiyao stole a glance at Wen Qingyan's peaceful expression, unable to guess his thoughts. In order to develop a lewd appearance, she still chose to compromise. When moving the nest, it happened that the officials had already taken care of the wild boar. At this moment, they were planning to throw away the pig fat, large chunks of fat and soft tissue, which made Ching Weiyao's eyes sparkle with white flowers. Do you like it? I'll reward you. The official raised his eyebrows, obviously noticing Ching Weiyao's different expression from others. The Qingha prince's mansion was once considered a royal relative, but he didn't expect such a crude hostess to sneak in, thank you, lord. Cheng Weiyao smiled and sent off the official, successfully taking over the whole wild boar's lard. The ancients didn't know how to buy it, so they had to give themselves a discount, didn't they? On the official side, there were strong and sturdy old men who deftly began grilling meat, and the aroma of roasted wild boars quickly lingered on everyone's noses. In addition to the laughter of the officials, there were also voices of people swallowing their saliva. While feeling uncomfortable in their hearts, they also kept an eye on the Qinghe Wang family, after all, even though they were hungry, it was better to eat things that even dogs wouldn't eat when Liu naturally noticed the gazes cast by everyone, and she tilted her body slightly uncomfortable, hiding behind the Empress Dowager. Back then, I was a princess, and people around me had to weigh my qualifications if they wanted to take a closer look at me. But now it's so good. It's all because of Cheng Weiyao, this broom star. Cheng Weiyao, can you stay away from our house? You can just bully me and forget about it. Finally, my brother killed a wild boar and couldn't even eat meat. You even brought these crude things out to make a fool of yourself. The more she thought about it, the more angry Wen Liu began to pick a fault. Cheng Weiyao ignored it and silently rolled her eyes as she lowered her head to process the pork fat. It's easy to go from thrift to luxury, but it's hard to go from luxury to thrift. In a short time, it's crazy to want this superior royal highness princess to recognize his identity. Wait, there's a long way to go, and you'll wake up after more grinding, brother. Look at her she's not even paying attention now. 
Wen Li Yu looked at Cheng Wei Yao's indifferent expression and changed her focus. Cheng Wei Yao couldn't help but laugh. This little lady is really a kindergarten graduate, and she always complains. It's a pity that we have to choose a director to file a complaint. My husband's gentle nature is just a mediator. Ayu, just a few words less. When Qingyin's slightly stern tone fell into Cheng Weiyao's ear, and she tilted her eyes, feeling somewhat surprised. She even spoke to herself for the first time. Do you need to do anything for my husband's wife? Looking into Cheng Weiyao's eyes, Wen Qingyun was mistaken and took the initiative to help. At that time, it wasn't me who caused Li Yu to harm her. She didn't stand firm on her own, and I just gave her a hand. Cheng Wei Yao seized the opportunity and quietly explained while the two were close together. Madam, this matter has already passed, don't bring it up again. When Qing Yun turned away, his face full of oil and salt. My husband doesn't believe me. Cheng Wei Yao pursed her lips. This time, when Qing Yun saved her, and it was as if Wen Li Yu had slandered her. It was okay for others to see it, but when Cheng Yun couldn't misunderstand. She is now firmly convinced that her space should be related to the male lead's attitude, and the necessary level of favorability must be maintained. How could it be? Let's set a fire for my husband and his wife. When Cheng Yun lowered his eyes and avoided answering. Cheng Wei Yao frowned and was about to try a few more words, but was surprised to find that her space had opened up again. Her surplus light fell on Wen Cheng Yun, who was fighting a fire. Although this husband appeared to be indifferent, he actually had some proud and coquettish attributes on him. I feel a deep affection in my heart, right the fire quickly lit up, and Cheng Wei Yao began to cook the lard, while everyone's eyes switched back and forth between the official and Cheng Wei Yao. Watching the official become so greedy for meat, let's take a look at Cheng Wei Yao's pot full of white meat that turns my appetite off. It's balanced for a while. However, soon the white meat in the pot gradually turned into golden oil residue, and the fragrance also wafted. Everyone's gaze began to linger on Cheng Wei Yao's side for a long time. Husband, please share some with everyone. Cheng Wei Yao scooped up the oil residue and took out a small box filled with salt from her bag, gently shaking it. This should be considered a delicious dish full of childhood memories. Unexpectedly, on the way to escape the wilderness, it turned out to be a rejuvenation, what's this? I won't eat it in this palace. Brother, please give it to someone else. Wen Li Yu shook her head like a wave as she watched Wen Cheng Yun walk towards her. Even if she starved to death, she wouldn't take a bite of Cheng Wei Yao's food. Cheng Yun, I'm not hungry yet. The attitude of the Empress Dowager has softened a lot, but her refusal is also evident. Despite being rejected one after another, considering Qing Weiyao's face, when Qing Yun sat down with oil residue, intending to solve it on his own. Brother, I want to try. Finally, when Qing Ming softened the awkward situation and blinked as he looked at the golden oil residue in his brother's bowl. It was delicious when it was made, and the taste should not be bad. The little dim sum given by my sister dot in dot law was delicious, and what I made myself should be more delicious. End of this chapter Chapter 8 What Hearts Me Most You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 8 What Hearts Me Most, Our Family's Qingming is Still the Most in My Heart Qing Weiyao walked over to Wen Qingming with a bowl of mixed oil residue and sat down, taking the initiative to hand him a pair of chopsticks. Delicious. When Qingming's eyes lit up slightly, and his gaze at Qing Weiyao became even more eager. Sister-in-law is so amazing. The fairy tales and language of children are the most authentic. Looking at the delicious food that Qing Weiyao and Wen Qingming ate, everyone's eyes hesitated a bit. But I just refused and couldn't bring myself down, so I had to give up. During the time of eating the oil residue, the pork in the pot has cooled down, and the oil production rate of the pork plate oil is high. The paste cooked is even whiter like milk. Cheng Wei Yao is very satisfied with her cooking skills and continues to distribute as usual. 
A group of ancient people have developed a bit of memory, but not many. What is more is that they gently picked a little to taste and then refused Ching Weiyao's eyebrows twitched and she didn't want to get started. Dealing with these 800 scheming people is really exhausting, Ching Ming, although oil residue is good, you can't eat too much. My sister dot in dot law will take you to find some other food to relieve greasiness. Looking at Wen Ching Ming, who was carved with powder and jade, Cheng Weiyao's heart moved. It's still comfortable to get along with children. Wen Ching Yun stood up and instinctively wanted to keep up, obviously after the incident involving the wild boar. He didn't trust the two of them to act alone. I won't go too far with Ching Ming, it's nearby. If there's any situation, just call your husband. Ching Wei Yao picked up Wen Ching Ming and handed him a gentle smile. She did intend to take Wen Ching Ming to find some wild fruits and vegetables, but the barren mountains and ridges were rugged with stones, and even if there were, there wouldn't be too many. Her main purpose is to use the mechanism of ten-minute maturation in space to secretly pick some from the space and mix them with wild fruits and vegetables. Wen Qingming is a child with limited attention, but Wen Qingyun is different. He has strong martial arts skills and superior five senses compared to ordinary people, making it difficult to perfunctory. After getting away from everyone's sight, Wen Qingming asked for help from the ground. Cheng Weiyao briefly taught him the skills to distinguish wild vegetables and fruits, and then gave Wen Qingming freedom. Sister-in-law, here. Wen Qingming is small and responsible for the wild vegetables on the ground, while Cheng Weiyao, as an adult, is responsible for the wild fruits on the trees, with reasonable distribution and high efficiency. Cheng Weiyao didn't dare to go too far, only five meters away from Wen Qingming, to ensure that she could handle various unexpected situations. Ten minutes later, the wild vegetables in Cheng Weiyao's space had already matured. She glanced at Wen Qingming, who was squatting to pick wild vegetables, and her consciousness moved. She had a handful of wild vegetables and mushrooms in her arms. It seems reasonable to grow mushrooms under trees, right? Cheng Weiyao slightly curled her lips as she was about to descend the tree when she suddenly noticed the thick and thick fungus growing on it. When Cheng Weiyao led Wen Qingming back, everyone had already started gnawing on the cake. Cheng Ming, come and have some pancakes. Wen Liu waved at Wen Qingming, glanced at the messy ingredients in Cheng Weiyao's arms, and sneered disdainfully. Sister-in-law. Wen Qingming didn't move, just looked at Ching Weiyao with eager eyes. He felt that his sister dot in dot law's cooking should be better than pancakes, don't eat too much and cook something delicious for us Qingming later. Ching Weiyao reached out her finger and lightly tapped Wen Qingming's small nose, then chuckled softly. She will start cooking later, and the smell of oil smoke is strong. It's not suitable to be warm and gentle. She can't bear to smoke such a milk ball. Mushrooms and wild vegetables are used to make soup, while black fungus is stir-fried separately. With the fragrance of lard, it quickly arouses everyone's craving. My sister dot in dot law is even more skilled than the palace chefs. Wen Qingming took a sip of soup and boasted as soon as he opened his mouth. The sweet little mouth coaxed Cheng Weiyao's heart into ecstasy. As a chef, the greatest recognition is the praise for her culinary skills. Before traveling, Chen Weiyao even opened her own Michelin restaurant. As long as we like it, it's good. Chen Weiyao happily assigned bowls and chopsticks to everyone in the Qinghe Prince's mansion, and she didn't care whether Wen Liu and the imperial concubine ate or not. Madam, thank you for your hard work. Wen Qingyun took the initiative to serve a meal for his sister and mother, and when he sat next to Chen Weiyao, he thanked her. His voice was soft and gentle, making people feel like basking in spring breeze. Husband, you're welcome. Ching Weiyao waved her hand. In fact, she prefers something practical, such as goodwill, rather than verbal gratitude. As soon as the idea arose, she noticed a slight increase in her spatial points. It smells so good, why don't we give it a try too? It seems like I need to put lard in. Just now, I put the oil tank on the ground. 
everyone began to be eager to emulate, and the pork fat, which was originally despised, instantly became a coveted item. Cheng Weiyao couldn't help but laugh inwardly. These ancient people are really fragrant, aren't they? The commotion here quickly caught the attention of the officials. Cheng Weiyao quickly put down the dishes, picked up the pre-prepared single on the side, and handed it to the leader with both hands smiling. If adults don't mind, you can taste it and relieve the greasiness. Sensible, I'll take it. Be quiet, don't cause trouble for me, take a break and get ready to go. The leader still understands the principle of not hitting the smiling face person when reaching out, and as for the food sent by Cheng Weiyao, it can barely be considered I. Catching the official took advantage of the situation and withdrew, causing much less movement among the crowd. During the meal, when Qingyun's gaze occasionally fell on Qing Weiyao, full of exploration. Climbing trees, cooking skills, and being smooth in handling things seem far from the rumored Miss Qing family. It seems like she has married a remarkable wife originally, it was an optional marriage, but now at first glance, Cheng Weiyao is a bit curious about him. Cheng Weiyao sensed when Qingyun's gaze and continued to eat and drink, her face unchanged. As long as there is no deduction of points, Wen Qingyun can see whatever he wants. He is a soul-piercing person, but with a different core, no matter how much he checks his background, there is no room for loopholes. After a brief rest, the official began to shout everyone on their way. Everyone get up, what kind of thing to do? Just eat and sleep. Do you really think you're still a high-dot-ranking official? Recognize your identity. The official kicked a sleeping prisoner with a single kick, his face full of high toes and anger. All the men listen, gather at our head and prepare to move things. Women and children line up according to their homes and households, don't move. Upon hearing the official's order, Cheng Weiyao and Wen Qingyun exchanged a tacit glance. Madam, please take care of your younger brother, sister, and mother, and go back as soon as you go for your husband. Wen Qingyun touched Wen Qingming's head and turned to leave. Qingming, come on. The Empress Dowager waved and led Wen Qingming to stand in the line of the women's family. Wen Liu played the role of a sandwich biscuit and followed closely behind Qing Weiyao, widening the distance between Wen Qingming and Qing Weiyao. Having only been together for a few days now, I have been completely obsessed with my younger brother. She won't let this woman have the opportunity to bewitch people. End of this chapter Chapter 9 Unsafe Nearby Areas You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 9 Unsafe Nearby Areas Ching Weiyao reluctantly glanced at Wen Liu, who looked wary of her. This sister dot in dot law was somewhat like a dog biting LV Dongbin, unaware of good intentions. The male soldiers in the exile team were all pressured by the officials to carry heavy objects, leaving only a group of elderly, weak, women and children, as well as severely punished criminals wearing handcuffs and ankles, slowly following behind. The front and back teams unconsciously widened the distance. Sir, could you take a break? I would like to take a break. Cheng Weiyao glanced at Wen Liu, whose face was slightly flushed as she rubbed her legs, and took the initiative to step forward two steps to approach the official's side. Since she had promised Wen Qingyun to take care of her family, if Wen Liu was too embarrassed to say anything, she would say it. Not to mention being a princess, even for an emperor, it is inevitable for people to have three anxieties. Women are just lazy donkeys grinding feces and urinating a lot. Everyone, take a break in place. The official didn't want to agree at first. Although the route was fixed, it was already slow for a short period of time, and even if we took a break, we wouldn't be left behind. But unable to withstand the earrings that Cheng Weiyao had inserted, they were truly dazzling and captivating the Empress Dowager held when Qingming and sat on a large stone, her eyes closed and her slightly pale face clearly worn out. She had just come to rest. Let's go. Cheng Weiyao walked over to Wen Liu and lowered her voice. Don't think I'll be grateful to you, trying to please me. No way. Wen Liu spoke harshly and acted quickly. Following Cheng Weiyao, 
she avoided the crowd and walked behind a short shrub. You go further away, you keep an eye on me, it's not convenient for me. Listening to Wen Liu's gentle urging, Cheng Wei Yao was speechless. When using the restroom in the wilderness, there must always be someone to watch out for the wind. Even if one is not careful of sudden attacks from wild animals, they must also be cautious of the significance of watching out for the wind if they are far away. Despite her inner complaints, Cheng Wei Yao adjusted her position and found a location where Wen Liu couldn't see her, but she could see her. This view is just right, and it can also take care of a place for everyone to rest from a distance. The incident also happened in an instant, and Cheng Wei Yao only saw a heavily convicted criminal walking pitifully to the side of the official, seemingly intending to beg for a sip of water. The official protected his kettle and spat on the face of the heavily convicted criminal. Serious criminals are different from ordinary exiled prisoners. They commit serious crimes such as murder, arson, and robbery, taking on all the hard and tiring work along the way. They also have to wear heavy handcuffs and ankle shackles. At this moment, the handcuffs and ankle shackles that originally bound the severely punished prisoners became their weapons, and the handcuffs hit the head of the official. After the official fell to the ground, the ankle shackles became a lifeline for locking the head and neck. With the first person in charge, other heavily convicted criminals also responded to the reactionary forces. The number of officials who were originally left behind in the team was small, but after being caught off guard, they quickly lost their ability to defend and died in despair. At the moment of the incident, a group of elderly, weak, women, and children scattered like birds and beasts. After witnessing the incident, Cheng Wei Yao quickly returned to Wen Liu's side and pulled him up. Let's go first, it's not safe nearby. Regarding the changes in the resting place, Cheng Wei Yao did not intend to say much. With Wen Liu's princess temperament, she might go back to find the Empress Dowager and Wen Qingming. In times of turmoil, preserving oneself is the first criterion for finding someone. Cheng Wei Yao Don't think that if my brother is not here, you will really become the head of the family. Don't use me too much. Wen Liu's face was slightly hot. Fortunately, she had already finished urinating and tidied up neatly. Otherwise, Cheng Wei Yao wouldn't have seen spring light with such a tug. She is indeed a commoner from a small family background, and her behavior is crude, two young ladies, where are you planning to run? Before Cheng Wei Yao could walk far with Wen Liu, she had an encounter with the heavily executed criminal who had just killed the official. His eyes flickered around Wen Liu and Cheng Wei Yao with a lewd light, and the handcuffs and ankles on his body were gone. It was obvious that he had found the key from the dead official. You let go of me. I am Princess Mingcheng, a relative of the imperial family. If you touch us, my brother will not let you go. Wen Liu was already dissatisfied with Cheng Weiyao's discipline and fell behind her a few steps. With just one swift step, he was grabbed by the wrist of a convicted criminal, unable to move and could only scream and threaten in shock. I know your family, what kind of imperial relatives? They're just prisoners like me, isn't they, princess? Hello princess, I haven't slept with a princess in my life yet, I've earned it. The severe criminal laughed heartily and used the strength of his wrist to push the person towards his arms, ready to move up and down. As for Cheng Wei Yao. She is also a beautiful woman. Although it's a bit regrettable that she didn't get married, she has been married before. There is no place to enjoy playing on her virginity Cheng Wei Yao's eyebrows furrowed so much that she could catch a fly. Of course, she could be alone, but refusing to save her life is not her style, let alone when Cheng Yin's sister the combat effectiveness of severe criminals has significantly doubled compared to before, and it is not enough to force them, so they can only rely on intelligence. Grandpa, why can't I be loved by my sister? In law alone. Am I unable to catch your eye? What's going on? Do you want to trade yourself for your sister? In law? Or is that useless Qingping Wang unable to satisfy you? The heavy criminal was somewhat surprised by Cheng Wei Yao's embrace. He grabbed Wen Liu with guarded eyes, and his gaze honestly scanned Cheng Wei Yao's body. 
What did the master say? What does it have to do with me whether she lives or dies? Anyway, she doesn't like me either. I just see that the master is strong, courageous, and scheming, so I can find a way out for myself. Is it true that he has been exiled to the border with King Qingping, enduring hardship and suffering for a lifetime? Cheng Weiyao lightly bit her lips and gave an affectionate look to the convicted criminal. Serious criminals are still considering it, so when Li Yu blew it up first. Okay, you slut, you despicable thing. I knew you were restless. I'll let my brother take you off sooner or later. Don't embarrass our Qingping palace. When Li Yu's angry and gritted teeth speech clearly increased the credibility of Cheng Weiyao's words to the convicted criminal. He smiled brightly and said, since that's the case, how about together? I don't mind having one more person, I think it's a bit unique. Cheng Weiyao was about to be disgusted by the face of the convicted criminal, but still had a charming smile on her face. She moved lightly and took the initiative to approach the prisoner's side. Grandpa, my younger sister is so noisy, why not knock out the impact of the province on our happiness? Ching Weiyao has a chance of winning alone, but she still needs to bring a brainless bronze, even a king cannot do it. And the following pictures may frighten the charming royal highness princess, so it's better not to look at them. End of this chapter Chapter 10 You Killed People You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 10 You Killed People, Okay, Truly Someone Who Has Served Men Before, Sensible I like it. The severe criminal swallowed his saliva and released Wen Liu's hand. After all, Ching Weiyao had already nestled in the arms of the convicted criminal, and her hand caressed his back. With a movement of her divine sense, a small knife was unconsciously hidden in her palm. There are still many places where I am sensible. At this moment, the severely convicted criminal was feeling uneasy, feeling the soft little hand caressing his back running along his spine to his neck. Suddenly, his neck hurt. Cheng Weiyao. You are so shameless. Wen Liu, who had already regained her freedom, did not think of running away and stood on the moral high ground condemning Cheng Weiyao's act of leaving the wall. Shut up. Cheng Weiyao's tone was very cold. When she cut open her neck, blood splattered on her face, making her clear eyes appear unusually cold. You killed someone. When Li Yu fell silent for a moment and was stunned for a long time before watching Ching Weiyao, who was tidying up the mess, tremble and make a sound. Hmm, so what? Are you going to report me? Ching Weiyao dragged the body of the convicted criminal to the nearby bushes and picked up some branches and leaves to bury them shallowly. The escape of such a severe criminal is even more terrifying for officials than death. Even if they die inexplicably, at least reporting it can still be said that they cannot endure exhaustion during exile. But if he runs away, it will be a dereliction of duty by the official, and he will be held accountable. Cheng Weiyao's burial method is to make it easy for the official to find the body. If he doesn't die, it's you and me who will die, and what will be lost is the face of the Qingping Prince's mansion. After patting the dust on her hands, Cheng Weiyao turned around and saw Wen Liu's troubled expression on her face, and comforted her with a gentle words. Perhaps in the eyes of ancient people, killers were all traitors and villains after this interlude, Wen Liu became much more composed and almost followed Cheng Weiyao's side without leaving a single step. But after all, as a delicate and expensive princess from a young age, when Liu's physical fitness obviously couldn't keep up, and she needed to stop and rest every now and then. Cheng Weiyao had to observe the surrounding environment and accommodate her. Why don't you know you're tired? We've already run a long way, so there shouldn't be any danger anymore. When Liu looked at Cheng Weiyao, who was always in a state of alert, and felt a bit puzzled. If you rest well, get up and continue on your journey. Cheng Weiyao twitched her lips, isn't she tired? I can't relax, this sister dot in dot law is as clean as an idiot. Upon hearing Cheng Weiyao's choking, when Li Yu stopped speaking and pursed her lips, lowered her head, and rubbed her sore legs. 
At such turbulent times, Cheng Wei Yao could have left Wen Liu alone, but with her modern intuition of browsing numerous TV dramas and novels, Wen Cheng Yun doesn't seem like a person in exile, as if she has ulterior motives since one's own golden finger is closely related to Wen Cheng Yun, it naturally becomes a person on the boat, protecting one's sister and creating a good impression. On the nearby tree branch, birds leaped up, and Cheng Wei Yao quickly walked back to Wen Liu's side, dragging her over to the back of the nearby big tree. Sister-in-law Wen Liu gripped Cheng Wei Yao's sleeve tightly in fear. Apart from the initial severe criminal, they had not encountered any other dangers along the way. Wen Liu's nerves had unknowingly relaxed. Cheng Wei Yao made a hissing gesture, her divine sense moved, and there was already an exquisite small knife in the palm of her right sleeve. Madam. Ayu. Wen Qingyun's long eyebrows furrowed slightly. He was a martial arts practitioner, and just now he saw two figures from afar. They looked familiar and came over. In just a few breaths, I couldn't walk far. With Madam's intelligence and intelligence, it's highly likely that she has gone into hiding. He calmed down and caught a glimpse of a small patch of sleeve hanging from behind the sturdy tree, looking like Ah Yu's clothes. Husband, we are here. Cheng Wei Yao breathed a sigh of relief and walked out from behind the hidden tree with Wen Liu, eagerly anticipating that it was finally time to meet. Have you ever been injured? The main unit has returned and discovered something unusual. I will take you over the turn. Wen Qingyun's gaze carefully examined the two of them, although they were somewhat disheveled, their mental state was still quite good. On the way to turn with the large army, it is inevitable to encounter a large number of criminals wandering outside. With the help of Wen Qingyun, they almost came and tied up one by one. Midway through, Wen Liu's gaze fell on Cheng Wei Yao several times, hesitating to speak. However, seeing Cheng Wei Yao and Wen Qingyun cooperating harmoniously, she hesitated a bit. After much thought, she approached Wen Qingyun midway and whispered a few words. Cheng Wei Yao saw it in her heart, but her face didn't show any signs of beauty. What unexpected events may have happened on the way? My husband heard that my wife had a soft and fearful nature before getting married, but now it seems that the rumors are not credible. My wife can clearly be called a heroine among women. As Wen Qingyun spoke, he forcefully tore off the sleeves of the severely convicted criminal with both hands, and twisted them instead of handcuffs to bind their hands and feet. Previously, it was all just pretending. When I got married and married a virtuous person, I didn't pretend to be gentle and virtuous. How could I get married easily? Cheng Wei Yao smiled and insincerely argued that when Cheng Yun did not live with the Qing family and his original body day and night, and his understanding of his original body was only hearsay in the eyes of the world. That husband really married a treasure. When Qing Yun's tone was playful, and his eyes had a deeper meaning. He almost wrote a few words on his face, whether he believed it or not. The lady's skillful way of protecting Ayu doesn't seem like the actions of a deep maiden to her husband. Perhaps the ancestors of the Qing family even had slaughterhouses. Qing Weiyao's heart sank slightly. As expected, her sister Dot in Dot Law still said it, but she didn't know how to describe it specifically, but she wasn't someone who would sit idly by. That's not true, it's just that I'm naturally boring in my boudoir. Isn't it reasonable to sneak up the tree and fight birds to relieve boredom? It's my husband, and it doesn't seem like he's a deliberate rebel when viewed horizontally or vertically. Cheng Wei Yao's tone was light and ethereal, and hitting mute fans was not exclusive to Wen Cheng Yun. Isn't this exile a bit of a fuss? I'm afraid my husband's secrets are not less than mine. If you want to have a heart to heart relationship, at least you have to show sincerity. Don't worry, we are both husband and wife, and people on the same boat, with a long way to go. The two people have a strong connection and will no longer bring up this topic, but assume that they have reached a consensus with each other. And when Qing Yin's lips quietly curved into a faint smile, as he had confirmed that the person in front of him, Qing Wei Yao, had changed when the three of them successfully merged with the large army, 
when Ching Yun was already holding four or five wandering criminals in his hands, each one resembling a frostbitten eggplant. Ching Wei Yao and Wen Liu followed behind step by step, like two powerless women. End of this chapter